It is time to get over to Brisbane. Lots and lots happening oh, over there at the moment. Yeah, not the good. champ joins us, of course, Brisbane Bears Lions superstar, Richard Champion. Champs, how are you? Uh, Greg and boys, just hang on a sec, I'm just tweeting. Um, <laughs> just let everyone know I'm on KG and... The General. So here we go. Okay, now, now I'm good. How are you going? Yeah, just be careful what you call us. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Champs, what's, what's the feeling like there, read the Brennan Favola drama? Well, boys, look, I've only heard of uh, as much as you have, but I was probably just as shocked as what uh, everyone else was. Well, should we be shocked or should we be surprised? I don't know. Um, one, two, three strikes. I don't know how many strikes do you need until you're out. But, oh, look, he's, he's just a silly boy. He just does not learn. And, and uh, look, I know this is all alleged stuff and there's going to be an investigation into it. But he's been suspended indefinitely by the club. And, uh, look, normally where there's smoke, there's fire. Yeah. Um, and uh, he hasn't got a great track record in this regard. And just, oh, fair dink. I mean, if you were 18, 19 years old, you know, you could probably accept uh, someone, you know, doing something silly and once or twice and, you know, you get give him another chance. But, at, you know, the age of 28, 29, it's, yep. it's not really acceptable, is it? No, well, Richard. Well, well, and why fly in the face of Michael Voss and the Lions who threw a lifeline for him, was sacked from Carlton? Like, that, 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 that's an enormous debt that Brendan Favola owes Michael Voss and the Lions Football Club. But to do what he's allegedly done, that's, that's a kick in the guts for Michael Voss. Yeah, look, it is, and not only Bossy, but uh, to himself, to his, to his family. family. Who, you know, he's got he's got young kids for God's sake. I mean, what are they going to think? Um, exactly. It's it's a it's a crying shame. Look, is is there a problem there? I don't I don't know, but um, something has to be done. He, he's, <clears throat> he's, uh, he's he's been fined, um, you know, in the past for for um, different issues and and things that have gone on. Nothing seems to have worked. So look, if Something does come of this, and uh, if he's if he's let go from the club, you know, surely, surely, no one else would pick him no, up. No, that'll mean, be it. His, his his footy talent is worth looking at, but you know, it didn't exactly set the world on fire this year. No. Um, and with these things coupled on top of. You just you would not touch him with a ten foot pole. No, you're, you're right. right. You're right. Look, uh, we didn't ring you funny enough to talk to you about Fev. That news broke when we wanted to talk to you today. We wanted to talk to you about Chris Scott, of course. That was he, that was just just a bonus, wasn't it? It was. was uh, bonus. You were just saying before, amazing how these things happen. When we need something to happen, just give chance to call something. Always <laughs> happen out there. Now, Chris Scott, you played with him, of course. I think your last season was with him was in two thousand. So we're interested, obviously, over here. He's in the running for the power job. I think he's got it. A lot of people still think it's maybe Matty Primus. Was wow. he the type of guy that you played with, Champs, where you thought he's a good student of the game? He's one of those guys that is going to make a good coach? Look, you rarely got a smile uh, out, of, out of Chris or Brad, for that matter. Um, they're pretty serious boys. Um, I guess they were, they were brought up. I mean, their, their dad was a war hero. Um, uh, he, uh, he died in the line of duty. Um, in an aircraft, and and uh, you know they, they had to learn to stand on their own two feet very early in life, and I think that sort of stood them in good stead as far as the leadership, um, as far as leadership qualities were con were concerned. And uh, right from the moment they were at the club, whether they were you know 18 years of age like Chris when he first came and and uh, and, and showed that um, showed that that leadership and and the way he went about his footy was just a credit to him. He was very mature beyond his years. Um, and Brad, exactly the same. So, look, you would you would have thought that uh, once they finished footy that they would have stepped straight in, which they basically have. Yeah. Uh, and, look, ideal candidate for, for any sort of coaching position. Um, you know, when are you ever ready to, to step up into a senior yeah, spot? Good question. Uh, he's, he's served his apprenticeship. No one really knows. I mean, there's been some great examples um, from both sides of the coin, you know, doing your apprenticeship first as an assistant coach or going straight into senior footy. I don't think there's any rules. Um, but, uh, gee, look, it surprises me because Matty Primus has done a great job mm. since, um, since taking over. And I liken that to the Paul Roos. Yeah, exactly. With, with, with Sydney. You know, he, he, uh, I mean, it was, um, it was, it was a done deal with, um, with, with Terry apparently. And, and because of his good track record, he just could not, not give him the job, and I thought, well, Maddie's, you know, he, he fits that, uh, he fits that, that ilk. Well, I, I just don't know what's going to happen. Well, there. well, champs, the feeling here, or the rumours circulating here, re Maddie promise, is the fact that they're 
some uh, members of the of, of the committee who's uh, uh, going to make the announcement or, or, or make the judgment feel that they want to get away from the Port Adelaide mentality, the Port Adelaide person. And of course, Maddie's having played under Choco, then then of course sure. uh, uh, coached under Choco. That's that, that's a thought coming out of the Port Adelaide Football Club. I don't necessarily yeah, agree with it, but that's that's the, that's the thought, champs. Yeah, that's a, that's a fair call too. Um, you know, it's. Uh it's, it's happened before, and, and it, it, you know, it doesn't necessarily work where your favourite son uh, or someone who's been through the ranks, you know, comes in, and you know, you, sometimes you just need a breath of fresh air, yep. different ideas, and and that sort of stuff. So, look, it's a tough decision. It really is because when you've come off a poor period, you know, you really need to um, to reassess things, to to come out strong, and to you know, get get rid of that that baggage that's been hanging around. So. Um, look, it's a tough call for the for the club. I mean, they're in they're in financial difficulty. Correct. They need to, they need to play well and um, and you know, just have a good spirit around the place in which to get out of that that sort of strike by getting supporters on board. It's a massive call. I would hate to be in their shoes. And Richard uh, Michael Richard Telly's gone to gone to the Suns. Are you not surprised with that? No, not surprised. Probably the worst kept secret in footy, to be honest, because um, you know they're they're throwing around some big dollars. And Jared Brennan's name was mentioned. Michael Riscatelli's name was mentioned. Uh, look, he's. I I actually, although I'm I'm happy for him because he's got a fantastic contract, uh, allegedly around about a half a million bucks a year. Correct. Certainly, probably at least probably double of what he would have been getting at the Lions. No doubt about that. It's it, very hard to refuse. Um, he played in every game. He he led the kicking, the marking, the handball. He led basically in every stat department at the club. And just going through a period now where you know the Lions really can't afford to lose anyone. They've lost you know one of their top three players. Um, it would be hard to take. And the reason I sort of feel sorry for him a bit is because I think he requested for this not to be um, made public until the best and fairest oh, yeah. uh, count, which is on tomorrow night, mind well, you. Um, you know, because he's probably got a, he's, he's probably, nice. you know, a very short price for it to actually win that. Now, it's going to be a, an uncomfortable for, position for him to be in to go up, go up and collect that yeah, medal. Yeah, uh, your champs are right. Going to a new club next year. I don't know why the hell they couldn't just hold off and, um, That's a good and point. Just, you know, give him, give him that, uh, that little bit of breathing space and make it a bit more comfortable for him. You know, another week's not going to matter, surely. Sure, exactly yeah, right. You want him to get over the best and fairest night and say, make sure you get your membership at the Gold Coast next year. That'll be <laughs> a, a really fitting departure, <laughs> <Yeah. parcher>, wouldn't <laughs> it? And then make a dash for it. <laughs> <laughs> Richard, was there a bit of feeling there when there was rumoured last year that the, that the uh, Lions wanted to trade him uh, for, for, for Vola? Was there a bit of feeling there? Well, you couldn't blame the kid, could you? No, no. you couldn't. You couldn't blame him. I mean, that's the reason why Daniel Bradshaw wanted to go. I mean, if... If you weren't wanted by uh, by someone and you were offered up as a trade, you think, well, they probably don't think too much of me here. Correct. So um, why would I want to hang around and play my guts out? It's it's a difficult position to be in. The way he's gone about his footy was a credit to him this year, given what happened. Um, but you couldn't you could not blame him one bit for wanting to move on. It, no, it, not it, at all. it was a bit of a kick, kick in the guts, and uh, Daniel felt very strongly about it that he wanted to go right then and there. And you know, look, look what look what's happened. Um, you know, Seb uh, hasn't set the world on no, fire. It's backfired. Now being suspended indefinitely. It, it's just a, a bit of a tragic story all round, and they've lost two good players now, and basically gained nothing. Champs, uh, Cracker's gone. Box there, Riscatelli's there, but still not the real big names that you would think the Gold Coast would have the money to get. Is it? Pretty sure now that Ablett's going to be there. I mean, it's uh, we, the talk of Campbell Brown, of course, but. Ablett's got to be the big name. It's hard not to see him there, is it? It is very hard. Um, you know, they've got a little bit more extra cash to spend than a lot of other clubs. And, uh, you know, look, from what I hear, um, it was an absolute done deal midway through the year. As the year's gone on, I think um, Gary sort of found it a bit harder to actually say goodbye and, yeah. and, uh, and leave the club and is having sort of second thoughts. Um, that's That's what I hear. Now... Um, he's pretty much achieved everything in footy already at a, at a very young age and, uh, you know, a change of scenery. I reckon if the Cats uh, bow out um, early, which is a chance, I reckon, on Friday night, if, if they bow out and don't win a premiership um, and, you know, go out in a disappointing 
way, I think that's going to make his decision a little bit easier. Mm, exactly. All right, Brisbane's still in the middle of their review. I, I suppose we see they released uh, Lachlan Penfolds, their fitness guy. Um, anything else happening down there? Yeah, no, look, a couple of guys have gone. Uh, the physiotherapist uh, left about five or six weeks ago and signed up with the Gold Coast. Now Lockie Penfold's gone, their high-performance manager. Um, look, there'll be, there'll be a few more, I think. Uh, this review had to happen. Um, you know, when a club sort of has been used to being pretty successful and, uh, you know, last year having a successful year under Vossi for the first time and, and really, you know, going down to, what, to where they did this year, something had to give in it or at least, you know, be reviewed and looked at. And, you know, I hope they come out the other end uh, you know, on the uh, on the positive side, but I guess it, they just have to justify, you know, doing this sort of um, review and just looking into things. And, and, and I, I guess if uh, if they don't improve next year, at least they've done the due, exactly. di- due diligence by having a look at things. And uh, you know, it's going to be a pretty tough year for them. They're not going to get you know some good draft picks next year. The Gold Coast is going to take all those, and then GWS the following year. So pre- those who didn't make uh, exactly. the top eight this year, it's going to be tough for everyone. Yeah, some pressure on Vossi next year too, uh, I would have thought, champs. He's, uh, yeah. he's, he's, he's yeah. got to produce. Yeah, that's right. Look, he's, again, he's one of those club's favourite sons that sort of sort of stepped into the position. Uh, and, yeah, I mean, there is a bit of pressure on him, and everyone will realise that, uh, you know, injuries played a fair role this year, but, you know, from probably... Mid to three quarters of the way through, there really wasn't too many more excuses, no. and they probably should have done a little better. Yep. Um, but yeah, I, I reckon he'll get until middle of next year, um, and if things haven't improved dramatically, which I really can't see happening, um, there'll be some pressure to come on. But you know, you've got to, you've just got to look at your playing list, and if there's excuses there, I mean, look at um, look at the Tigers and, and Melbourne. Yeah, uh, exactly. Two years ago, you thought, my God, how long can Dean Bailey last in this job? And all of a sudden, Bingo. the guys they, they picked up a couple of years ago, they're coming good and, and, and they're showing some improvement. And that's, that's where you need to go from a, uh, from a footy club's point of view. Exactly. Richard, we appreciate your time as always, mate. Good to talk to you. And all the best, Richard. Good on you, boys. Keep an eye on things. See you. Richard, 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 Richard joins us. Uh...